This is not great chess. <laughs> this is excellent Oregon beer. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this was originally written for a column that I wrote for the LA Weekly. And it is about me being a little kid and experiencing an event that sort of shaped kind of uh, the rest of my adult life as most events that are worth writing about that occurred when you were six are. I'm going to tell you a story about that time I made a sandwich. <laughs> it's pretty good. You <laughs> learned to go right through the bread. I grabbed an extra wad of bread and I jammed it into that hole in the bread and sandwich there. I like, I patched my bread. <laughs> That's when we found out we were out of jelly. <laughs> Sandwich and I learned on that day that sometimes, even when you catch a hole in your sandwich, you're still going to be out of jelly. Thank you. I like how you wonder you just did at the end of that. I'm going to story. We talked about it. All right, so this is called, uh, This is the Way I Remember It. And uh, to borrow a phrase from one of my uh, great writing influences, uh, William Goldman, not that it matters, but most of this is true. When I was six years old, I set foot onto a t-ball diamond for the first time. I was skinny, awkward, and unsure of myself. I was basically a smaller version of the teenager I'd eventually become. The adult I'd eventually become, too, minus the hair. I didn't have very good coordination. Still don't. That's my dumb set. <laughs> but my dad loved baseball. And I knew that if my dad loved it, then I loved it too. Because that's the way things work when you're six. It was the spring of 1978 when smog alerts were as common as reality shows are today. Just as annoying. <laughs> A hazy, reddish school sunlight shone down on the field at Sunland Park. The sounds of other kids playing on the swings in the giant rocket ship at the playground and mingled with the smell of barbecue smoke as I stepped up to the plate to take my first practice swing. We're talking baseball, little wheel is playing. We're talking baseball, he's such a little slugger. My first swing connected with the middle of the team. The baseball, in those days with gas lines and national malaise, we didn't have those soft, rude, reduced injury factor balls my kids got to play with, fell off and landed in the batter's box on the other side of the plate. The other kids giggled while the coach clapped his hands and shouted encouraging words to me as I picked the ball up and put it back on the team. I looked up and saw my father's expectant face through the tangling fence near the dugout. I slowly and deliberately lifted my back, held it out at arm's length, and aimed at the top of the tee with one eye closed. I stuck out my tongue and furrowed my brow. I tasted sweat on the corners of my mouth and felt my heart beat in my ears. The bat touched the ball, and the ball fell off again. <laughs> the kids giggled. The coach clapped. I replaced the ball on the tee. Come on, Willow, my dad said. You can do it. I took a deep breath, held the bat as tightly as I could, and swung for the fences. Talking baseball, everybody's watching. Talking baseball, it's getting kind of awkward. <laughs> the ball sailed off the tee toward right field. I watched it go, absolutely astonished that it was in the air, just like a baseball player. From the first, Will run fast. It was my dad, excitedly hollering at me through the fence, joy in his voice. I dropped the bat and ran to first as fast as I could, my tracked shoes kicking up small puffs of rust-colored dust the whole way. Talk, talk, and baseball. Time to get the hang of it. Talk, and baseball. I'm sure this will all turn out well. <laughs> that was great, Will, the coach said. Okay, who's next? I went back to the dugout and watched the other kids bat around. Most of them were more successful than I was, except for one kid named Brian, who had glasses, perpetual bedhead, and a nose that only stopped running when he jammed his fingers into it, <laughs> which was all the time. Brian was last. He hit a grounder to short, and the coach gathered us together at a little plate, where he told us to take a knee. I looked around uncertainly until the kid next to me kneeled down. Oh, my 
six-year-old brain thought, take a knee. Wait. <laughs> I took a knee. And I looked up at him. He had the kind of beard and sunglasses you'd expect to see on a suburban Little League coach in 1978. Or Jonathan Colton on stage today. <laughs> a dirty baseball jersey with yellow sleeves. That was great, everyone, he said. Now we're going to hit some balls without the tee. What? <laughs> the thought of a ball being thrown at me filled me with dread. Um, wasn't that the whole point of tee ball? Avoiding a ball being thrown at you? I looked for my dad as I walked back to home plate. We made eye contact and he must have seen how terrified I was. You'll be fine, Willow, he said. He smiled. He was proud of me. But he kind of leaped in me. Talking baseball, need some reassurance. Talking baseball, don't be such a pussy. <laughs> I stepped into the batter's box and picked up my bat. I held it high, pointing it to the sky, just like my dad had shown me in our front yard. I look at the pictures now, where the coach's son, a big kid named Kenny, got ready to deliver the ball. <laughs> Kenny was a year older than me, and probably outweighed me by 15 pounds. He had shaggy long hair. He looked like a male version of Tato O'Neill in the bag of his hair. <laughs> he began his wind-up, and I lost my nerve. I looked up at my father. Dad, I'm scared! The ball hit me in the side of the face, just above my left cheek, with a soft smack that sounded like a gunshot inside my head. There was a collective groan from the other kids and a few gasps from the adults. I fell to the ground and burst into tears. <laughs> baseball, there was me the total talk. Baseball, should have put it up on YouTube. <laughs> My dad ran out onto the field, helped me up and inspected my face. There wasn't any blood and it didn't look like it was going to bruise. Like most childhood injuries, the fear was worse than the actual wound. The coach asked me if I wanted to try again. I'm sure there were kids who would have bravely stood up and tried again, but I was not one of them. I shook my head and hugged my dad. Kenny had joined us. I'm really sorry, he said. It's okay. I love home. I think I'm going to take him home, my dad told the coach. Okay, he said. We'll see you next week. When we got into the car, my dad took a closer look at my face. You're going to be okay, he said. We'll put some ice on it when we get home. Two miles, one stoplight, and three stop signs separated the park from our house. By the time we got to the second stop sign, I was completely under control. My face stung a little bit, but that was it. My dad put his hand on my shoulder and he said kindly, you just took your eye off the ball. Next time, next time, <laughs> the whole thing flooded back to Kenny's wind-up. <laughs> the ball speeding at me. The sound it made when it crashed into my face. <laughs> I burst into tears. I don't want to play baseball anymore. I cried. Top baseball. Wilshire was a crier. Top baseball. And he made me mad. Awkward kid who 
just wasn't that good at or interested in sports. <laughs> Because in my imagination, I am one hell of a baseball player. <laughs> 